Sherry. Yes, are you? Okay, can I have your attention, please? We are so excited to welcome you to the launch of Lady Pod. <laughs> Second, you will finally see what we have been up to all these months. And not just us, we've had the help of our fabulous investors, Greg and Ellen from 10 Port Capital. Yay! Our wizard of webcraft, Parker. And our mega helpful interns, Kimmy and Granger. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Keep Snapchatting, babies. Please. <laughs> Lady Parts has been such a passion project for us. Ever since this one showed up on my doorstep and basically demanded that I drop everything and do this. Some of you know how persuasive I can be sometimes. <laughs> I didn't need much persuading. Thank you. I got Abby's vision of a place where real women could go and find an online community of friends, share ideas, and tell the truth, hard truth sometimes, about being middle-aged and female. Our latest election really showed us how challenging it is to be a PPWP. A, a powerful, powerful person, person with pussy. <laughs> we have managed to assemble a really incredible group of writers and artists and thinkers. All the parts. A lady part. So everybody refresh your drinks. Yes. We're about to get started and get ready for our final countdown. Yeah. So welcome back to Build. It's Thank great you so to have much. You here. Thrilled to be here. Yeah, big fans of the show here at Build, great. and uh, we—I can't wait to talk to you about Lady Parts clip. But before yes. we do that, <laughs> let's recap where we left off uh, in the last season. Okay. There were uh, some few unanswered questions. Right. Where did we leave off? God, yeah. I can't even remember. Can anybody? Clue me in on where we left <laughs> off. I honestly can't remember. Well, we can re we, we can go back to that. But yeah, but looking ahead to season four. Yeah, um, we, you know, shot the, uh, we shot we shot season everything. three, and season four and five all in one fell swoop. No, so it's how was like, that? Because that was a lot of those, those a lot of episodes that shoot all at once. It was uh, it was great. Uh, you know, the thing is, we knew that season five was the end at uh, the end of season five. So we got to really focus on making a satisfying arc and ending the show in a really wonderful way that will please the fans and, and tell a true story. And so it was great. It, it actually helps when you have an ending in mind because then you can be specific and not try to draw out storylines that might be unnaturally long otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was pretty powerful, powerful 10 months. And the fans will be satisfied. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. But this is for season four, so season we've four. got we a while to go. Yeah, we have a while to go. We have two yeah. more seasons to go, but yeah. it's interesting that you already know the fate of the show, but yeah. you can't reveal it yet. Yeah. But you can tell us a little bit about season four. I do remember the end of season three. Yeah, yeah. Um, Abby and Mike split up, and Abby shows up at Barbara's house with an idea for Lady Parts. And so the season four starts where uh, it's really the primary relationship is between Abby and Barbara, mm -hmm. which is interesting because up until now, it's been all about whatever man Abby has in her life, but now it's really about her friendships. Mm -hmm. And she and Barbara, having gone into business together, it's it's more problematic than I think they would have hoped. Yeah. Um, she's facing some problems on the social media front in the premiere episode. Yes. Yeah, she's trying to get some traction it on the- It gets deeper than yeah. that. Like, they have problems with each other. Yeah. And I think anytime you have a relationship with somebody that shifts into professional, it, it's complicated. And in this show, a lot of the um, your character leans a lot on her friends, and we're probably going to see that a lot in season four. Is that yes. correct? Especially, I think she faces some sort of family issue down the line. Yes, yeah. It's a pretty powerful uh, season. I really love season four. There's some beautiful episodes, and some great um, visitors come back from Ooh. earlier seasons, which people will be excited about because they were requesting it. <laughs> okay, that's great. I can't tell us yeah. who yet. I won't tell you who, but okay. my husband was not excited. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. like, that's a no, pin. He's really fine, but you know, just yeah. in general. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to expect some steamy scenes. There's a, there's yes. a little bit of steam yes. happening. Yes. How do you feel about doing those steamy scenes? Because hate, hate doing them. <laughs> um, I, no, I don't hate it. It's, it's hard, especially being married. It's like, how do I honor my marriage? Because in order to do these scenes well, you have to certainly make sure you really are into it. Um, but so you have to sell it, um, which means that I just tell my husband not to watch. Right. Um, because it really is work. Um, it's really funny because I wrote a short film that I am 
producing and directing and being in. Haven't done it yet, but I needed to figure out a couple of shots because he needed to do some drawings for special effects. In order to set that up, I needed somebody to be me uh -huh. in the scene and my husband was gonna be the guy that I'm married to in the short film. So I call Kat Koiro, who was a director on House, who lives around the corner from me, and she couldn't do it. She's like, but I have a friend, she lives in the neighborhood, same coloring as you, she'll do it. I said, great. So this total stranger shows up at my house to take these pictures, and she is gorgeous. Uh -huh. She is like 20 years younger than me, same coloring, but like massive blue <laughs> eyes and luxurious curly hair and beautiful figure. And my job was to put her on top of my husband <laughs> to take photographs to figure out this special effects shot. And, um, Robert was, he was like, really, are we doing this? I was like, yep. And I was like, please understand, this is not a swingers party. <laughs> and we're really, no one's coming on to you. I just really need this picture. And I explained yeah. it to her. She was like, no, whatever, like totally game. Maybe would have been game for the whole thing. Um, but I don't think so, very sweet girl. And, um, and then we did these pictures and I was like, I said to my husband, see, see how it's work? Yeah. With somebody, you know, having to sit on your crotch and it's work. <laughs> And he was like, mm, yeah, <laughs> sure. He got each other I didn't back. like it at all, he said. <laughs> sure he didn't. <laughs> exactly. But he's a painter, and he shot, um, he's painted some nudes of you, too. He has. he has. So that's kind of, they're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a very talented, a very talented painter. He's done, he did a whole series, uh, right when I, um, when Girlfriend's Guide got going, and I was making out with all these different men mm. and having sex scenes, he did a whole series based, uh, uh, he did a series of portraits of people who were uh, posting selfies on amateur porn sites. And so he did this sort of bleak series of nudes. And then um, he did a series of nudes of me, which were not bleak. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he was just working out that whole uh, idea of how a body is a part of work sometimes. Beautiful, but you know, I'm looking at you and I can't help but think about the think Seinfeld. Think about me naked. Well, the Seinfeld episode <laughs> okay. um, that you were oh, in, yeah. the Faking Long It time ex ago. episode. And uh, my grandmother, who was alive at the time, was very upset that I was having sex with George on yeah. television. <laughs> like, she couldn't understand that we were not naked below the covers. <laughs> Everything was fine. That's uh, really yeah, funny. it was it's, cute. That was a great episode. It still like has a uh, real, you know, it still resonates today, yes. I think. I did two episodes yeah. actually, but yeah. but really the mango is the best mango one. Mango one. Yeah. I think it was good because Seinfeld sort of pushed the boundaries on, and made these <laughs> things in topics of conversation, Well, yeah, to talk right? about orgasm was, yeah. was huge at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was it was a great episode to be a part of. Yeah, it still gets referenced today. So do those those scenes get easier for you down the line as you go through your career? Some are easier than yeah. others. Like I have... I have a scene, and I can't even remember what episode it is now, where I'm supposed to be orgasming, and that, to me, is the worst. Because, first of all, no, you don't really want to see someone's real sex face unless you're actually having sex with them. And even then, it can be questionable <laughs> sometimes, depending on who it is. Um, and so, trying to figure out what that is for your character, it's, it's just so self-conscious, you know, acting, you want to be as you want to throw as much of your self consciousness out the door. You want to be free to react to whatever's coming at you, and that's really what acting is. It's this beautiful roller coaster ride of staying in the moment and having this experience while also doing the same choreography so that you can edit it together. So it's it's a real mixture of both being very present emotionally and and also being very choreographed. Um, sex scenes are are not that. Sex scenes are really choreographed. And it's not about real feelings. It's about what looks good on camera. It's about what looks like passion. Mm -hmm. um, because real sex actually isn't particularly photogenic. Porn stars will tell you that. Like, sure. they're actually having yeah. sex. And they have to do, like, bizarre things with their bodies in order to make it for film. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're not actually having sex, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> um, um, there's really nothing about it that's sex. Um, but... Uh, it, it's it's so yeah so it's the it's uncomfortable in that regard because you can't actually do what we love to do when we act when you're in those scenes. Sure. Well, you look phenomenal, Thanks. and I know the, the the Bravo heads told you do not get plastic surgery. Do you know stay right. clear of that? A few years. I ago. wasn't going to anyway. You weren't going to anyway, but, but I think that we've seen it a number of times where women of a certain age panic when they're going to be the lead of a show and they 
go in somewhere and get all kinds of things injected into their face, and then they're unrecognizable on day one. Um, and it's really unfortunate. It's really unfortunate that people feel like that's what they have to do. I'm very grateful. I have decent skin, um, and I'm not judging anybody who has mm -hmm. has gone and gotten stuff done. But um, but I think that aging naturally is really important in this business, so that you can tell a story that people can recognize themselves in. You've been on so many television shows throughout the years, and now you know you've, you've had a longer career, and you know you don't seem like you're at a loss of finding work. Uh, do you <laughs> feel, you know, as though there is work for you know women who are in their 40s, 50 years old? More than there's yeah. ever been. I mean, when I first started in this business, the idea that I would be the first for the first time ever the lead of a romantic dramedy that was sexy when I was 48 yeah. that I, it would have seemed impossible because mm -hmm. at that point if you if that hadn't happened to you by 35 that just wasn't going to happen to you mm -hmm. you could be a working actor but you wouldn't you weren't going to have that experience so um, yeah that's pretty amazing I think that since there's so many outlets now we can tell more niche stories we can direct our stories towards certain parts of society and it gives us greater opportunities opportunity altogether. But uh, I will tell you this, having been on Girlfriend's Guide for this amount of time with such an incredible boss as Marty Noxon, mm -hmm. and I've gotten to write on the show, I've gotten to direct the show, I've gotten to produce on the show, and now I feel like I, I want to be more a part of creating work, not just for myself, but for other people. So that's very exciting, too, that, that women are moving up in that way as well. Absolutely. Actually, that was going to be my next question, because yeah. I know you've written a couple episodes. You've produced quite a few episodes of this series. When do you do you want? When do you see yourself behind the scenes? It seems like you're producing a short already. I'm doing a short. Yeah, and developing a show. Okay, so can you tell us anything about that? I don't really know. I can tell you about the short. Okay. Uh, the okay. short is uh, based on an Edgar Carrot short story, and I have no idea when I'm shooting it, but hopefully soon. Um, and uh, it's he's a great writer, and I had read this story on stage at an event, and I loved it. Um, so I've. Uh, turned it into a short film, and he was very excited about it. I asked him on the spot there. I was like, "This, can I please do this? He's like, yes. Um, and then the, the book project, the book that we're developing into a show, we just started writing, so I'm not sure when I can talk about that. OK, all yeah. right. So it's boring anyway. Like Talking about it now when it's in development, it's the slowest process I've ever experienced. Like okay. the, the, They came to me with this book project a year and a half ago. Then I found somebody to partner with on it two months later. Then we put together a pitch that took like four or five months of meetings with UCP. And then they were like, let's go. And the negotiations took nine and a half months. <laughs> I was like, this is the slowest experience I've ever had. But, um, but it's exciting. It's really fun to be able to create. Well, that's great, and I know you, I can't. I still can't believe that you shot all the episodes yet uh, already for this. I it's know. Crazy. So when you started this series, you had just gotten married. And yeah. You're starting a show about divorce, of course, like about many other things and relationships, etc. Have you thought about? Um, has the show taught you anything about relationships or um, keeping a marriage together? I find. Well, first, really, a talk. Well, in terms of the marriage, you realize going in that you really have to pay attention and you can't let things slide yeah. and you have to you have to you have to commit on a daily basis mm -hmm. it's like you know alcoholics anonymous where people say it's one day at a time marriage is one day at a time every every day counts towards your marriage mm -hmm. and every day you can win or lose in your marriage um and it's really important to not take each other for granted mm -hmm. and to and to not to not let things that are bugging you just slide to keep the lines of communication mm -hmm. over and to open to keep keep sex alive like keep it all feeling really connected mm -hmm. um, and in terms of friendship which really this show is very much about these girls go through so much with each other and what impresses me about their relationships is that they get really mad at times there might be big betrayals but they find their way through it they're their connection and their commitment to each other goes deeper than all of their issues with each other. And I, I, I think that's a kind of amazing way of looking at a friendship. When you meet fans, is that what they say resonates with them the most? When It's usually about their relationships. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, yes, I hear some people talk about their girlfriends, but, but I, when people come up to me about house, it's mm -hmm. very... Um, 
It's all about how they love the show. It's all about what the show meant, like just how they were addicted to it and whatever. We will come out to be about Girlfriend's Guide. It's personal. Mm -hmm. They want to hug. <laughs> they <laughs> want to cry. They want to tell me what they've just been through and why this show got them through it. Huh. And that is, a, that's pretty amazing. That's really amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned House. Of course, yeah. a lot of us got to know you from House. Yeah. Uh, what are your most fond memories of being on that series? Well, certainly the experience being on House was a pretty incredible. I mean, to be on a show that's that popular is unique, mm -hmm. um, a little terrifying, sure. uh, but um, but but wonderful to be on something that's sort of moving culture. Mm -hmm. um, and I made a lot of friends, some of my closest friends, especially from the writer's room in that show uh, that I'm still very close with. Uh, yeah, it was exciting. It was a very it was a turning point in my career. It was certainly the biggest job I'd ever had. And the character itself started off kind of, the pilot I had a lot to do, but then I sort of fell into the background and I really didn't know where it was gonna go or whether or not it was gonna be fun or interesting for me. And it turned out to be a really a wonderful part of the story as a whole. And so it was incredible. I know you probably know my next question, but there's always a lot of talks about reboots, et cetera. Does, do you ever hear rumors or reports like, let's get the house gang back together? No. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> but you, you it's cool. Fans ask that. Fans ask no. that. Yeah, you're like, no, not gonna happen. No. <laughs> do you yourself watch TV? And when you do have the time, what yeah. do you watch? Um, I do, I love TV. I watch, I watch Game of Thrones. Are you up to date? I am up to date. Oh, okay, so which means you watched last night. Uh, oh no, I didn't watch last okay. night, don't tell All me All right, that. no spoilers here. Jesus, that was so close. <laughs> no. You have to stay away from all social I media I was working, today. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, I've had a crazy weekend. Um, but I uh, watched Game of Thrones, I watched The Walking Dead, both of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not into zombies, but uh, I know Norm, and so <laughs> I thought I, I should see what he's on. Uh, one day, like a couple years ago, when I had the flu, and I literally watched <laughs> with the flu four seasons of The Walking wow. Dead, and I it was so unhealthy. Um, and I also was playing solitaire on my phone while watching it with the flu. So by the time I got better, I was seeing zombies <laughs> who were either reds or blacks, and I was like imagining organizing them. And my it was the weirdest. Do you know what I mean when you just get way too obsessive about something? I'm a little, I can be that way. So, um, so yeah, I watched that. I watched, I really loved Bates Motel. Um, that's done. Um, gosh, I can't remember what else, but I watch, I watch a lot of shows. I like TV, even if it's a show I don't like, I like to watch it just yeah. to learn. Why don't I like this? What's the problem? How do I learn from that? Um, but yeah, there's so, there's so much great programming. My friend's show Casual, oh, yeah. Michaela is amazing. I watch Transparent, yes. that's another part of our community and mm -hmm. Orange and yeah, it's all, it's all really nice. What do you look for in a role when you're looking for a new role? Um, well, I look for something new. So I still get offered all the jobs that are just like Cuddy mm -hmm. and that's not particularly interesting. Um, uh, especially right after house it was just like she's the head of the other department like it was just like she's uh she works with an irascible man um um so it was always the same part until i found girlfriend's guide how did you find girlfriend's guide marty knoxon okay. her brother is best friends with my husband oh. and i happened to run into her at an event and she knew my work and she we were talking about about what we did and she had mentioned that she was doing this this, she was developing a show about divorce and would I ever be interested in something like that? I was like, yeah. And then six months later, she's like, yeah, so it looks like the show might actually be, or you, would it be something you'd be interested in? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she wrote me saying, hey, the show is getting greenlit. Will you read the script and tell me if it was something that I can go after you for? And I read it, I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then it got greenlit and then they offered it to like 10 people more famous than me. Oh. <laughs> and then I had to wait until they all said no, <laughs> until I could then go in and prove I was right for the, for the part. And um, it was, it was, Fantastic, it worked out exactly the way. But that's the process. Yeah. Has it's ultimately, it's what you're always dealing with. Like first they have to find out if JLo wants to do it and then they can move on. Oh man, what's been one of the most challenging parts of your careers or roles of your career? Most challenging. Well, this has, been simple. This has definitely been the one where I had the most responsibility mm -hmm. and physically challenging, emotionally challenging. Um, 
I would say this one, but in in the greatest way. And I got to grow a lot and I got to act my face off. And uh, every job has its own challenges. You know, on House, the challenge was to make it interesting when I had, you know, there were episodes where my whole episode was, House needs you. <laughs> and you know, like, how is that interesting? But like, okay, what's our relationship? How do we layer this? And And so you kind of, you kind of, embed the experience with a story that, that the audience will pick up and they'll want to hear more of that story even though that was, had nothing to do with what you were saying. Um, and so that's its own challenge. Um, uh, I played the first ever uh, lesbian on network television and we had to do a makeout scene um, and it was the first lesbian kiss on network television and it was a big deal because the network liked when we kissed each other, but didn't like it when we kissed each other again. Huh. They were like, good with the first one, second one looked like you liked it. <laughs> I was like, well, that is the story we're telling. Um, so they managed to keep it in. They kept in the they second did. kiss. Okay, I think that's important. You gotta yeah. look like you like it. That's kind of the <laughs> that's point. That's acting, yeah. right? That goes back to our conversation from yeah. the start. It's kind of the point, yeah, yeah exactly. if you're telling that story. Well, acting has been a part of your blood for a long time. I mean, here right. we are in the you know East Village area, not too far from NYU, where yes. you went to school. Yes. When was the first taste of acting that you received? Like, when did you say, okay? When I was three. Three, okay. Um, I knew I was going to be an actress. I told my parents. They didn't believe me. And then if there was ever a stage and a reason for me to be on that stage, I was on that stage. But I don't come from a family that knows anything about this business, so... I sort of had to figure it out on my own. And um, I started by, I got some headshots done. Mm -hmm. And then I went into New York. I lived about 20 minutes outside. I took the bus into Port Authority when I was like 14. And I had this book that had the list of all the managers and agents that were listed in SAG. I, I mapped them out by block. And I went to all of them. <laughs> and I met some creepy people um, <laughs> and had creepy things happen. Um, but I, I was just trying to figure out how this business worked and how you got started in this business. Um, it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> um, but uh, I ended up, my, my story took strange turns. And mm -hmm. it, it's, my own, it's a personal journey, but um, and everybody's story will be different because it's an impossible business to break into. So there's no path. You have to sort of forge your own path through through the woods. Perseverance, that's for sure. Perseverance and creativity, mm -hmm. and thinking on your feet, and trying to just find the opportunities where you can. Well, great. Well, before we let you go, uh, yeah. I'd love to get some questions from the crowd here. Sure. Um, we got our first one standing up right here. Oh, hi. Hey, yeah. um, I love the show and your clothes, especially like this vintage shirt you wore in the kitchen like two seasons ago. And I want to know if you ever, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, do you ever wear your own clothes or bring, ask to keep the clothes? Um, well, especially when the show ended, it was the only time we were really allowed to do that. And we can't keep them. We have to actually buy them, but we get them at a steep discount. So you had to pick wisely. And the things that I picked were things that either only you only saw for a flash on the show or you didn't see at all. Only because um, when you wear something on television now, you wear it forever, right? The shows are always available. They're always streaming. And so you're always going to be in that outfit. So I took a lot of shoes home, things that you didn't necessarily notice. But I know she had a great wardrobe. There's a few things I'm like, oh, why didn't I ask for that? But I don't know. They wouldn't give me all of it. They had to pick and choose. I spent way too much money when I left this show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. My question is, what is your secret for longevity in the industry? I think that, um, are you in the industry? Um, yeah. You, yes, yeah. good, excellent, good answer. <laughs> um, uh, I think the most important thing that I learned was to be fearless about selecting your jobs. So in the beginning, it's good to do whatever jobs come your way because you're learning so much. But after a while, you'll start recognizing that some jobs you've already done, either in the size of the role or the type of role. And, and learning how to say no, even if you can hardly afford it, is really great because it f forces 
the world to see you in new ways each time. And, um, and being, being fearless about making those decisions, I think, is, is really important. Also, it's, it's just riddled with disappointment, this business. And also great excitement. So that you can't go after something that means so much to you and not expect as great of joy as you have sadness in the process. Um, and the stick to and the persistence, um, that is something that uh, a lot of people don't have. And they, they fall by the wayside. And it's funny because in waiting rooms when you're 20, you're around a bunch of people just starting. And it's a bit, it's a weird competitive sort of, it's a weird room. Like people are trying to make each other feel insecure. It's really ugly. Um, uh, but 20 years later, when you're in a waiting room, it's like you've all been around, everyone has a career, and it's kind of high five time because you're still alive <laughs> and you're still working, and it, it just doesn't happen a lot. That's my answer. You're welcome. Hi, thank you. Next question. Hi. Hi. Um, let us know what you think about that episode of Game of Thrones from yesterday. The episode of what? Yeah, oh, I haven't Thrones? seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. When you watch it, let us okay, know. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, Doing so many different things now. Uh, Girlfriend's Guys opened a lot of doors for you yeah. in terms of writing and directing. What are you hoping for for the next 10 years or 20 years? Or uh, I want to be, like I was saying before, I want to be as much of a, a participant as, as I am a creator. So um, it, it felt really good on Girlfriend's Guide when I could get my friends work, who I know are really talented, who may or may not have a lot of work. Um, and so uh, I want to be in a position to make awesome television and, uh, and have people participate in it that I know are fantastic who might get, might get looked, looked over at times. It's great. Um, you know, I'm so glad that you were here today. I work for HuffPost. Yeah. There was a storyline on HuffPost Divorce from a couple of years ago, like yeah. from the other seasons, where you were almost the editor, so we're so thrilled to have you here. <laughs> thank you. You remember that one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for your lovely questions. Thanks for watching. Check out A Girlf Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. It debuts on uh, Bravo. On the 17th. August 17th. Yeah. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Lisa. <laughs>